You are now listening to Next Legacy Radio, a radio station for the people. Waiting a good week for this conversation to pop off. So I've been I've been wanting I've been wanting to discuss what is going on in the world of journalism. So I am very, very happy to be here hanging out with the the squad this morning, this afternoon, if yeah. you're in Central and Eastern Standard Time and wherever else you are in the world, because, I mean, I feel like we should have topics to talk about that is worth, worthy of discussion, but also adding some uh, some backdrop to what, what the temperature is when it comes to what's going on in the world today. So, you know, as far as this particular one, we chose journalism as a topic, right, Denia, for the simple fact okay. that it's changed, obviously, from how it was and what it was and how people report uh, throughout the course of the day. And as I'm speaking, I want to welcome all the people who will be joining in. If you have a conversation about or an opinion about what we have, you can definitely uh, tap in as well with your thoughts. Yeah, just um, raise your hand and then, um, but Charles, tap on my picture, make me moderate it real quick so I can bring people up because they want to come up. So you guys tap on my picture and then I'll say to make moderator. Bam. Got you. See, I, I got love you. it. See, it's only the second time I saw Charles, so he gets, he gets it. I'm, I mean, <laughs> I, I feel like I'm already ready. I mean, I've had some yeah. clubhouse experiences, but you know, as far as this being a first of many, I, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well versed. Candace well, the building. What's good, Candice? Ready, ready to go. <laughs> What's up, Queen Erica Candice? None of the people that will be listening. Um, we going to dive deep into it. And like I said, as more people continue to follow in and, and, and offer thoughts and things like that, please, please, you know, share that conversations like this, and we'll have other conversations too, should be brought up. For the simple fact that, you know, we, we I encourage law and order when it comes to content what we put out how we put it out why we put it out what because everybody has agendas on what they want to do not just with themselves or how they want to market themselves or whatever the case so as we go through this topic beforehand i just want to welcome everybody my name is charles madison ceo of next legacy radio station is also brought to you by and i'll go ahead and throw one out paramount plus we have an app available paramount plus on your tvs make sure you go ahead and go to www.nextlegacy.com forward slash partners click on the link and click on the paramount plus link and get your free trial which starts today if you want good tv streaming service for all the details definitely go there www.nextlegacy.com forward slash partners click on all the partners that we have honestly i mean we got good deals we got a lot of good stuff popping too so uh definitely make sure y'all um just explore what we have as far as a station and what we do so with that being said look journalism is something that i hold near and dear to i mean i have a business degree also i have um so many different things in journalism that i've been a part of over you know, a decade and a half almost. And then, yeah, I always look at things a little differently too. I always definitely want your opinion. You have your own opinion. You don't have to agree with everything that I say or do or what this, 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 this. My problem with journalism in a case like this, where it's just like, you know, we, well, I come from a background where it was good to have sources. You didn't write out your sources, right? But not only that, you wanted to uphold the integrity of what it is that you're talking about when it comes to a specific either um, article you're writing or if a, if it's a report that you're putting out, um, things of that nature. Um, but I see a lot of people actually are talking about more of the hot takes than the actual journalistic part of what you're reporting. So my question, Danielle, and all the people out there, like, who, who is it you're trying to be? Are you trying to put out an article that has that particular content that you are driving home so you can be able to have that be your number one source? Or are you trying to be famous? Because there's a lot of stations. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of, there's a lot of journalists 
who want to be in the front line and not their article. So to me, as a journalist, I always look at, I want my product to be the the main source you go to. I want it to be well-read, well-versed, whatever the case may be. I do not want to be famous. That's not who, I don't want to have hot takes or I don't want to, you know, put somebody in a crosshairs because I'm trying to get a name. That's not, that's not how journalists should be in my opinion. You know, and I see a lot of differences going on and I see it in radio. I see it in print. I see it in social media, obviously. Um, and it's different now. And I just want I just want anybody's takes really on it as far as how y'all feel about just the structure of it, how it is now and why why it got to this point, how it got to this point and what can we do about it? Opposite shows like this to me, as far as bringing back some integrity in the business of journalism, because. I don't see it. I'll go first. I think the the biggest thing when it came to journalists being one to be stars, the problem is that a lot of journalists forget that they their job is to highlight the person they're interviewing. And they focus so much on themselves, they can't even let the person they're interviewing get a word in edgewise. I do blame reality TV for this. I definitely blame social media for this because now the lines are blurred. And that's why you have people that were uh, celebrity, or that are celebrities trying to be journalists, which is another whole other problem. <laughs> um, so it's like the, the lines are blurred now. There's, everyone's not playing their role. And too many journalists now are so focused on their brand that they're forgetting that your job right now is to promote someone else's brand. So, well, is it well? Well, personally, I don't have a problem with celebrities trying to be journalists if those if those celebrities have a passion about journalism and how they get their content out and things like that. I don't have a problem with that. Um, I don't have a problem with athletes wanting to be journalists as well if they're trying to get their product out in a certain way or whatever. So you have it's like a civil war going on when it comes to. You know, who's going to get the first scoop? But that that's how it was for before I was born. People was hustling like that, trying to be able to get close enough to be able to put the word out at that particular time or an article or whatever the case may be. And that's and that was cool if you was grinding super hard and you wound up getting the scoop, quote unquote. Right. Um, and, and that and that's part of journalism. That's just the way it is. I feel like this. If you're doing that, that's cool. If you're turning it into look at me and not the article that I'm writing or the story that I'm putting out or whatever, and it's just like, look at me. I was the one to get this. I'm I'm bragging about whatever it is. Or if you're diming out your source, which is, uh, I don't even see why they do that. There's a lot of people that do that. Not going to name names. There's a lot of people that do a lot of different things that makes me look double double back. Social media, yeah, you're absolutely right. It gets to a point where I feel like there's a lot of people with their own opinions based on everything, but they don't go and check the source in general when it comes to their facts they're going to go off of so many people believe in what's written or what's put out there that they don't double back and go back and look and see hey let, let me go ahead and check a source before i actually put that out there i mean there's so many celebrity quote unquote deaths that people will go back and re re repost and then find out those people are still alive you know what i mean like little things like that um, well, it's not little in some cases, but you get what I mean. And, and that, and that to me, it's just, it's sorry. It's not even like news. So what are you doing out there, journalists, in terms of how you are protecting your product? Because your product should be your brand, not your individual success. Because fame, I give a damn about that. I just want to, I just want to put out good stuff. And have a good conversation and talk about things. It may be uncomfortable to some people. It may be comfortable. We may laugh. We may get mad. We may cry. We may this or that. But it's deeper than just, all right, 
Charles is about to be famous, so I'm about to go off on people and have hot takes so people can do what they do and say what they say and let it be a buzz because I don't want that. I want my product and what I put out, my conversation with this person or that person be the basis, not Charles is the star of the show or Danielle is the star of the show. And it's all about us. Hell no, it's not. It's not supposed to be about that. If I'm interviewing said guy or girl, then it, that's my, I'm not going to just jump off the top rope and come at you with innuendo or falsehoods or whatever and make the interview be uncomfortable. I've heard that. That's why I get so many people nowadays, celebrities. I talk to celebrities a lot and they're like, all right, you're going to interview me. Why? What? Who? When? Where? How? Some people have it structured like that because they want to prepare themselves, but some people don't trust people because they don't know what's going to come off the top rope and then interviews over. And then you want to be the first person to get a hot take for what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. For sure. Definitely. Um, Erica or Prof T, do you guys have thoughts on that? Hey, thank you. Um, thanks for having me. Hello, Denaya. Thank you, Charles. Hello. My name is Teresa Gustinelli, otherwise known as Prof T from Philly. And I love the topic. I, I think that, you know, there should, there is freedom of speech. We all have a right to share, you know, and, and hold our sources. And I'm not a journalist, but I find that so many um, news outlets, social media, journalism has gotten so watered down and so sensationalized that it's almost as if, you know, they want to sell a story and regardless of the facts or the truth. And that's what I was going to say. Um, but I appreciate the space and here to support Denia. Thank you. Prof T over to you. And, and here's the thing, Prof T and thank you for, for chiming in too. But when you say that too, I, I find it intriguing because it is sensationalized. It is. It where did where did it go so off the rails? Social media could be at blame. Reality shows could be at blame. You can blame a lot of people. There is the freedom of speech. Absolutely, everybody's entitled to that. Because I feel like while I'm saying that as journalists, we do need to have a voice, and our voice should be sized up with our opinions. But I'm talking about journalists, not just a person who has something to say. It's just like there is there is a hidden agenda that some people have when they, you know, and I and I hate throwing the word journalists around because there is some people who are really, you know, based on on the based on everything that I see here or whatever, like they they're really into making sure they get, okay, I got my sources straight. I got this. Let me go ahead and drop this news. And then there's other people who don't, which is which is really the the <laughs> it, it's it's targeted a different way and, and and as i keep talking if anybody um erica queen karen uh, any of you guys have any thoughts as well please please jump in hey everyone this is erica avila i'm from chicago really good friend of denaya so denaya thanks for having this platform nice to meet everyone really good to hear everybody's voices and just know that there are still authentic people in the world. And I think that authenticity comes along with everything that we have going on in the world. Um, a lot of people right now just aren't being their true selves. They're just kind of trying to follow clout. And like you guys mentioned, you know, saying certain things or digging into certain things or not digging enough, not doing the research to put the real story out there because they have a hidden agenda, as you mentioned. Um, so I think that's very important. Um, just like Prophecy mentioned, you know, some people, we all have the freedom of speech. We do. We also have the freedom to pick and choose what we want to see, what we want to hear, and what we take away from that. We, we can see things and interpret it and translate it a totally different way or you can chime in and give different feedback from what we both saw. We saw the same thing, but it's what you want to do with the story that you're seeing or reading and what you pick and choose to actually see and read 
and and also give out pour into the world of this is what it is i mean so yeah there's a lot of people unfortunately we're in a world right now where there's a lot of negativity and bad news spreads faster than good news and yes. that's the world that we live in right now uh you're you're 100 right um i always feel like when it comes to news and how we report it what's being said i mean there's more people who will view comment listen or pay attention to a recorded fight on social media versus someone graduating from college or starting a business or you know anything that is laced with a positive nature right which is really sad in a sense because that's the fast food network of not just so, social media, but journalism. You're going to get a journalist that's going to give a hot take on a on an athlete and how trash that person is or whatever, but not backing it up as far as why that person is not playing well. Blah blah blah. They're they're gonna they're gonna talk a bunch of crap about that particular athlete, except give their own details as far as why that person is not playing well. Maybe they're off their game. Maybe maybe it's the batting stance or it's the way they're shooting. Whatever the case may be, they're not digging down to the reasons why that person is not performing in their opinion. But instead, they're saying that somebody else is not doing well because of something that may not even be 100%. And therein lies the problems that I feel like we need to address because is it just going to be us in this room? No, there's going to be there's going to have to be so much more of us to be in a situation where we can change narratives. And I think if we hold ourselves accountable to what we do, how we do, why we do, and just be honest with ourselves and our agenda, we will be better off than most because we're doing it at a level that may be inspiring. Maybe they're in a situation where they may want to change their approach. Um, instead of just going for the quick, the quick one night stand, like that's just not like, just give me slow love. I'd rather take that than the, 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 uh, uh, this, this Queen Karen, if you have something that you want to add on, please do. Well, you know, I'm listening to all of this and, you know, in my, I guess since 1998, when I had something happen, you know, I have such big, and I want to say. Uh, respect for journalists for giving that story that things have changed so much because as you mentioned uh, kind of the rat race for getting the story out what happened to fact checking mm. what happened to having the best story if it comes out a day late but having the facts that your listeners can have something substantial to work off of i teach all of my clients to when you're getting ready to do a presentation or do an interview or however it goes with wherever it's going to have your points out to have the things ready have things ready so they don't have to dig deep that they can just hit on it and click on it and know that that's right or they can tell someone they may have staff tell them check this out it's all there so that what you want represented is there and be prepared for the bad things of course that you don't want out right. but have them there you know but to me journalism has been so watered down and i don't want to say by the newbies it's just the rat race because people are passionate about telling stories or i want to say giving the news those that are passionate they're they're in a, a terrible maze trying to hop over to one one niche niche and go to another and then go back and forth and and trying to be the best is hard till some have fallen to the wayside and those are the good ones that would be teachers and leaders you know but what gets me the most is when they do these stories and the journalist is using profanity where i think in each curse word they may use it may be a really important word they could put in to heighten their story as they say trigger words or things like that to make this story a real smoker that people will say, did you hear that? And it goes as is popular now to go viral, but viral because this issue that they're talking about is important, not viral right. because they said this or they did that, or they got this on or they're, you know, not that. 
you know, and I think about it so much. And when I saw the title of this room and also, you know, the queen that, that, you know, I saw was in this room that I know it's valuable information, you know, but it is under fire because, you know, it's like, what you're going to believe me or your lying eyes, mm. you know, which one, well, we got to first jump. You know, I tell people, I don't want to be long, but I tell them that, you know, when you hear these stories and issues that come about and you hear, you know, what the facts are supposed to be first, that's sometimes you have reporters out there that are on in the field that they go for the first person to give a story, to give something about a recap or, a, or something about what's going on then. And the, most of the time, it's not the strongest one. Of course, right. if law enforcement's there, they're going to speak up first, no matter what you think. And when you see, they've already spoke up first, not saying that they're always truthful because they may not know the facts. Who you know when you go into the hood, and I hate to use that, but you go into the hood or these urban areas that are going to run up and tell the police everything. So if you get one police officer that's talked to one person, perhaps that's not the best thing, but that's what blows up in the news. And then when you have to put it in print or anything like that, people think it's not true and it could be really the foundation of that story. So that's what I think about in journalism is under fire and I fight for the journalists. I've helped so many do stories that we were so proud to get out, you know, and I could get in touch with people and make them comfortable to tell their part. And then it gets smacked with something that's not true. Mm -hmm. I'm Queen Candy and I'm mm -hmm. Queen for now. Uh -huh. Love your take. Love your take. You mentioned a lot. Um, and Brian, before I add your opinion on there too, tell the stories, Queen, is is it's 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 gonna always stay that way. It's always gonna be that way. There's always gonna be somebody, man, woman, or child that's gonna have a story to say. And to your point earlier, they're gonna their version of it is gonna sound different than yours. You're gonna come off the top rope with your take on it, but we're all gonna do that we should all have passion for what we say and how we say it and not jump on the next bandwagon of things or let me be bigger than what the conversation is like that is that is important to journalism my radio station that i have is just like my child i would die for this i would do whatever i can for this i want to leave this for that next generation of people so they could be able to understand why I love what I love and why I do what I do and how I am to be who I am to be, flaws and all. And as a journalism, as, as a journalist, journalism to me should fall in line with your passion. Leave that topic, that article, that gift that you're supposed to have as the catalyst to either inspire, create conversation about whatever the case may be. And to me, it's important to share with other sources of like-minded people and even the ones who are not to be able to have dialogue. You don't have to agree with everything I'm saying, but at least if you hear me and I hear you, we come together, we have a conversation, we can agree to disagree, it's fine. It's part of life. It is journalism to agree to disagree, to have those conversations pop off. Brian, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I'm just listening right now because I jumped in the room late. So I just want to catch up with the room, read the room, and then I give my opinion in a minute. Got you. I got you. And welcome as well. And journalism is under fire. Is it time to change things? And I'm not just going to leave. I'm going to have a conversation and throw dirt on the situation without saying that, look, it's here. We want it to be great. How can we make it great? at the end of the day, because it's what I love to do. It's part of my process as far as who I am as a person. It gets me up every day, it keeps me moving, because if there's opportunity that I can be able to share something with the world, to the world, I'm, I'm all in. And hopefully it's laced with conversation and, 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 com and conversation that's gonna matter to folks. Um, it could be from the littlest accomplishments to the biggest accomplishments to the you know, hard truths about where we're, what we're facing in life in general, or some of the things that we have to do when we look in the mirror every day and see who wants to become what. So at the end, at the end of it all, I think it's important for us to be able to put things out there to get this opportunity out for the people, but also call it as we see it. 
I mean, my mama used to do that all the time. Look, you know what? If you feel like if you feel like you did great with your with your schoolwork, that's cool. Do you feel like you did great? And if you didn't, then do better. No matter what grade you get. Same thing with journalism. If you feel like at the end of the day, you can put this to rest knowing that you did all you can. Queen said something earlier as far as tapping in the resources. Make sure, look, I'm not going to I'm not going to get the hot take. I'm going to wait a day. I'm going to make sure that all my sources is right. I'm going to add on to the story with my thoughts, my opinions, different things like that. And then share my vision with the world in a sense where it's going to make all the sense in the world to me. And that's where we're at when it comes to that. People see something, they are quick to pop in with their opinions. I don't even know what I see anymore, y'all. Let's just keep it real. When I look on social media and I look on like, you know, there's news, there's reports, there's stories, there's, uh, I want to say improv when it comes to certain things. You see a fight going on and it may not even be a real one. Or you see, you see something in journalism and in, it may not even be real. And that's, it, that's the lies we face every day. So at the end of the day, what, what can we do outside of what has been going on to be able to change the narrative? Tonight, you got any thoughts? Absolutely. I mean, I think the one thing that we do very well and have done from the very beginning is that we don't focus on the negative. When situations are going on with celebrities, what do we focus on? Their music. We focus on their acting. What you know, it's never a situation where we're gonna, you know, be like, oh, what's the tea? Occasionally things will come out in an interview that we have been shocked about, but that's nothing that we push for. And I think that's the that's the biggest difference. The people are comfortable coming on on our station. And, you know, and at the end, sometimes say, like, this is the best interview ever because, and we know why it pays them to say that. They just do it because they're able to be themselves. We don't rush them. If they want to stay and have fun, we let them stay and just chill out. You know, um, we don't, we let them be about them. Sometimes we'll have their, their fans come in and call in. It's all about showing them love. It's all about giving them their flowers every time we have somebody on. The problem that we have with a lot of people now is all they want is that click and that view. And they're trying to figure out how can I manipulate this conversation to make them say something out of pocket so I can go and share it on my page, which is insane. But you see it all the time. And you never want it to be a situation where a celebrity is afraid to come on because they don't trust you. That's why they have PR people. That's why they have people that that'll say, "Hey, don't discuss this." If if your PR, if their PR person says, "Don't discuss this," and you bring that up, you've now lost the trust of that celebrity and their and their team. So the, that little fifteen seconds of fame, how does that benefit you? That hurts you in the long run. This entertainment business is about building relationships. Why is Erica here? Because I started working with her as a model first and we became friends. She's a Deny Designs for You client. And when I found out she was in Clubhouse, I was like, girl, you got to come on. We got to do rooms together. You have such an amazing voice. All these things. First room back, she's here. Prof, she's super, super awesome as well. I, um, I'm always in her rooms. We're always in the first 13 together. She just has this phenomenal energy and loves to network network with people. Queen Karen, I've seen and I've been on so many stages with her, and every stage is a phenomenal stage where you get value. And Brian, of course, has the device Pocket USA that's saving lives. I got to interview him and, and tell you guys to talk about you know everything that he's doing, the partnerships he's building. So I, me. I always say it's always quality over quantity. Some of the people are interested in the likes and the whatever, but if you're not building those relationships, if you're not touching someone, if you're not speaking life into people with everything that you're doing, what are you really doing? So, yeah. And that's important. And I think that's the, the, the best take from 
this this journalism conversation, yes, it's under fire. Is it time to change things? Absolutely, absolutely. The only way anybody could do that is to continue to spread the word and maybe, maybe, just maybe, some of these narratives where we're we're trying to filter out what's news and what's fake, what's passion and what's phony. We're trying to figure all that out. But we're still the mission is still the mission to put out everything that you possibly can with as much passion as you can and honesty as you can and just keep moving that narrative to a better narrative so we can have at least a balance. And and that's all I want. Like I like like my like my queen said earlier, um, I think we all agree we all have opportunities where, you know, hey, freedom of speech property said that we we all we all can agree that's what it is right we all have it it's there we should have it that's the way the world works i just want balance i'm not saying that we need to denounce everything and call it a day because there's going to still be some people out there that's going to continue to push out their agenda and their agenda may not match mine or yours or yours or yours or yours but give us a fair shake with this though Give us an opportunity to come off our top rope with what we're armed with, with facts, with passion, with honesty, and with with reliable sources that you even fact check. I have a lawyer that fact checks another lawyer that I have as well. I have people that fact checks. I mean, I'm always double checking on stuff. And I think it's important for us to make sure that we're covering bases, doing what we need to do moving forward in order for us to have the kind of balance that I'm seeking. And I think we're all seeking that as well. We're, again, like I said, we're not trying to we're not trying to denounce anything. We don't we don't want to abolish anything because people have their right to say what they want to say, post what they want to post, do what they do. It may not be what I like, but it is what it is. But I want to I wanted to start this off with just some honest conversation about how I feel about journal. I love journalism. I love when it's done, in my opinion, the way it should be with all that I just mentioned. Honesty, fact checking, passion, putting a news message out there or a product out there that that a person would appreciate. You know what? I, I respect I respect your opinion. I may not agree with it, but I respect it because I see how you're putting it out. Man, woman, or child. We need to pay attention to our, our children, journalists as well, and not to get them confused with fame. We need to make sure that we let our young journalists know, too, that it's not about you. It's about your brand and how you put your brand and your articles out to the world. And whatever happens with your individual success happens with your individual success. But that should not matter when you're putting out the kind of content that will possibly withstand the test of time or you're getting a news article out or something out there out that you have worked your ass off to to accomplish. That's super important. We need to make sure that we're, we're helping other people build their confidence in what they do instead of trying to get it for likes. Because I'll talk about this on another episode. A lot of those likes ain't even real. <laughs> a lot of those people ain't even real. Well. Let's keep that solid. Well, because we're <laughs> buying likes and comments. But um, Erica, what do, what do you want to say? I wanted to piggyback of what he said and also what you said pertaining to putting the positive messages out there. Um, and he said, you don't want to denounce it but we know that we want to change the narrative because it's going in more of a negative way, right? So with those things being said, I'm not for the cancel culture. So we're not here to cancel anybody. Mm -mm. The thing is that you have to openly discuss and again, agree to disagree. And how else are you going to get to the bottom of anything if you're not actually doing the research interviewing them, finding out, or going straight to the source. Stop following clap, you know, all the clout. And and even so, for your own mind and your own sake of your platform, 
don't share those things. You know, I don't, I don't really, my platforms I come in and out of, I take my little breaks when I need them, when I get busy, but for the most part, I'm not really putting things out there. Even if I watch it, let's just say I'm bored and I want to watch something and I watched a video where they're fighting. I'm not sharing that on my platform and my social media pages. Cause that's not the message that I want to send and deliver. What I'm sharing is when I'm on a, on a good note, the good, the bad, and the ugly, it needs to be real. And people need to understand that you're going to be more liked when you are authentic. And there's nothing wrong with telling and talking about when you hit a low, when you make a mistake, but then you know what, at least you change it. You're open to change. So those are the type of things that I feel that we need to put more out there. It's like, mm. you know, just be real and that's it. Exactly. And that, that's the biggest thing about it. When it comes to social media, you can ask anyone in this room, I, whether I am the same way online that I am offline. I've never had a quote unquote persona because for what? For my voice might change a little bit. My, my, my voice might change a little bit when I'm on radio, but aside from that, the, as, as far as personality, there's nothing different. And everyone in this room has talked to me offline or has seen me in person, so they know that that's the truth. <laughs> I have no reason to lie about anything that I've ever done. But so many people, you know, will be online or whatever and doing things to a cloud, and I'm like, but you know, if I I know you in real life, right? Like that's not even what the business is. Why are you lying to these people right now? Right. You know what I mean? And it's and it's crazy because that's how situations can happen. Because people have this persona of they're making all this money and they're doing all these things. And it's like, you wasn't even there. What are you talking about? What? <laughs> you know? And it's just it's just crazy. But I love what you talked about when you said um about making sure that young journalists are, you know, that we respect them and guide them. Because what's happening now is that you have these kids that are you know, doing stuff on TikTok and, you know, reels and all that kind of stuff, but they don't really understand it and understand the power of their voices. Some of them do, but a lot of them don't. And so it's about teaching these kids about media in general and what can happen and and um, digital currency and your, and building your reputation and understanding how important it is to build people up when you were online, how important it is to share positive things because what makes things go viral is comments, likes, and shares. Knowing this, why y'all keep sharing stuff that's negative and crazy and making these ignorant fools go viral and they should have no attention whatsoever? Consistently. I should know what an island boy is, but I do because y'all kept sharing this stuff and now they're famous. Like, this is the type of thing. I, lo I love I it. love Snoop Dogg, right? Love him to death. He's great. He's I, I love you know where he started to where he's at. I just you know love where he his journey, right? Snoop on social media will put everything that is crazy out on social media at the expense of the obvious people. I mean, people who post stuff that they shouldn't be posting. Whatever, it's their opinion. It's what they do, but you know they will get three, four, five million views. If they're all real, right. bless your heart or whatever. If not, then it is what it is. Who knows? Um, but at the same time, he doesn't put nothing out that's really celebrating accomplishments or life. It's about a fight or something crazy or something weird or whatever. Now, that's his opinion or that's the way he posts or puts his stuff out there, which is fine. Um, I just threw that out there because I see more I guess you could say more negative posts in a sense or d those WTF moments versus, you know, like I said earlier, kids graduating or somebody doing something super positive or whatever the case may be. Um, Charlemagne's like that. Charlemagne, the guy's like that too. Like I said, I'm just dropping just those names, just in general, those are coming off the top of my head as far as how reckless some conversations or even posts can be because then it starts a civil war within ourselves, I guess, in a, in a way. But then we're at civil war with ourselves anyway. So it's kind of like, okay, sh do we shrug it off and keep it moving or do we keep adding the truth? I mean, I feel like we've been lied to for so long 
that it's numb to us in a sense, but I'm not in this business to just brush stuff under the under the rug or keep it in the closet or whatever. I I need to put my opinions out there just like they do. And that's why I'm not going to hate on them and what they do, but a balance is what we need so we can have a discussion like this. Absolutely. Balance is so key. Yeah, there can be a little some craziness here and there, but if that's all you're posting, if that's all you're sharing, you're putting negative energy out there. Like I've gotten to the point where like I the only the accounts I follow is something that that I want to share. So like I follow accounts that I talk about black wealth, building relationships, build you know black success and like i'm like i'm like oh they only post positive stories about black folks thank you because goodness everything else has been kind of crazy so and then and the cool thing about instagram is that when you start following those kind of accounts they show you more things that can help you to get money and you know and and build wealth and all those kinds of things and you know and, and showcase positive things that are going on I'm like, okay, I, I'm like, I like this path. This trend's awesome. You know, or I'll, or I'll follow people like Tony Baker because not only will he have just the crazy animal voices, but he actually has some really profound things that he'll say. And that's another thing too. We also need to start, stop telling people that are, that are athletes to just shut up and dribble. These are people at the end of the day and their talent is their talent, but when they have a voice and want to talk about something serious, allow them to do that. Don't just tell them, well, what's your nice game? That wasn't what we were talking about right now. We're talking about this serious situation. What do you mean? <laughs> like, this is not the time. There's a time and place for everything. And I think a lot of people don't understand what so, time and what place. So, Denai, let me let me say this, and I, and I know that, you know, and as we get ready to you know, wrap this, this shortly and, and Prophet T, I'll, I'll let you add on to that as well. But let me, let me say this, because you, you just mentioned something that sparked this. There, there was a report that I saw on Fox and, and this was right around the time of the, uh, of the Illinois shooting. I believe six people died. Um, and I don't even want to mention the guy's name who did it or whatnot, but it was something on Fox News where she was saying that uh, the person who did that, um, that crime had a lot, it, marijuana had a lot to do with it. Um, marijuana is to blame for it. Um, that's the kind of journalism you guys and girls that I have a problem with because it starts to get real in real situations and things like that too. So why are you on a billion dollar network, millions of people watching, basically just saying marijuana was the reason why this person went off the deep end and killed six people in Illinois. Journalism like that doesn't make any sense to me because that is someone's obvious opinion, but not laced on facts. So when you put it in an arena like that, I'll put it on my social media page so you, you guys and girls can be able to hear it if you follow Next Legacy on uh, Instagram. I'll put it up there after this is done. But I wanted to throw that out there because I hear stuff like that. And I, I get pissed for this reason. You, me, and the whole free world, quote unquote, know that there is more to that story than just marijuana. We all do. <laughs> so for somebody to have <sighs> the, the, the audacity to just throw that there as a reason with no fact checking, no this, no that, no nothing. Is bad journalists. We can talk about entertainers all day, but it gets real when you go on Fox, CNN, some of these other places, and they say certain things where it's just like, what the hell? That bothers me. Wait, since since, you're, since we're going there, uh, he only wanted half an hour. He didn't just brought the wrong subject. So, um, because I live in Illinois, so... I remember because I wasn't paying attention. I was doing something else, and and Charles hit me. He was like, "Are you okay?" And I'm sitting, he's like, "What are you talking about?" That was and it. And I look and I see, yeah, it was on Fourth of July. And he's like, "I'm like, wait, what?" And so I look, 
and I see, and I see the same thing, and I'm calling out every mainstream station newspaper out there. If y'all don't car- start calling these murder terrorists what they are, murder murderous terrorist thugs, that's what they are, because y'all have no problem saying it when the suspect is is. Um, Muslim, you have no problem saying it when the suspect is African American or Latino. There's no those words come out of your mouth real quick then. But for some strange reason, when the person is not of color, it becomes a well, you know, they had a hard life, or you know, they were lonely, or they were taking drugs, or every excuse in the book. Every yeah. excuse in the book. Aside from murder, terrorist, thug. Like, y'all don't know the words all of a sudden. It's the craziest thing in the world. And and <laughs> what I keep hearing, which is just crazy, is that people are brushing it off because that happens in Chicago. First of all, it wasn't in Chicago. Let's start there. That did not happen in the inner city. I know what y'all are trying to pull. That's, that, doesn't, that doesn't happen here. You have too many police for that. Um, I, I have other questions about where the cops were in, in that situation because in our parades, our police are super heavy. Another thing, I, I blame the city of Highland Park because y'all knew that food was dangerous. So don't sit up here and act as if, you know, it was just it was just because he was smoking. No, he was dangerous and he was terrorizing people before that. Why was nothing done before this? Why didn't no one say anything? Because everybody's like, oh, well, we didn't know he was going to... You didn't know? He put it on the social media everywhere. You, I've heard about his YouTube. YouTube, y'all blame y'all to blame for this, too. Because you won't kick people off the platform that keep doing these things. You keep giving platforms to people that are saying these evil, destructive things constantly. And you wonder why they keep on doing it. Cause and then, oh, by the way, the guy's alive, by the way. Yeah, but again, but then in uh, you know, the gentleman in Ohio had ninety shots put inside. Oh no, he was that he was shot at ninety times, but he had sixty shots in him, and he might have had a gun. They're not sure. All those kinds of things, but the guy that the murder terrorist thug is alive and well. That's. That's the thing. Um, Prophet T, go ahead and, and, and speak, because I, I know you wanted to say something before we got off into this, but go for it. Well, now that we are off into that, you're speaking my language, because <laughs> as someone in the field of mental health and wellness for almost 20 years, I'm a clinical psychotherapist, and nothing bothers me more than these kinds of situations. Now, you got to look at that person's picture. He was, the dude was whack. I mean, now, listen, there was clearly problems. Why is this person still, why was this person still in the street? And, and back, there's so many di- directions. I'm going to go and I'll keep it quick. I'm just going to speak. I'm going to stay in my lane. Um, I think mental health and mindset has a lot to do with journalism. Um, there were so many things you guys were saying. Um, and you know, I think Erica talked about the cancel culture. I love how you said that. We don't want to keep, you know, we don't want to do that. And, and, and Charles, you were talking about Snoop, Snoop Dogg. You know, I stopped following, you know, I follow him, but I don't watch his stuff no more. Cause it was like, come on, I got stuff to do. Um, and Denai, you're talking about the mental health of this goofball in, in Chicago, um, or wherever, wherever that was. I know it was somewhere. What was it? Highland Park? Mm-hmm. Right. That's a pretty affluent neighborhood. Yeah. Pretty we don't play um, so, yeah, I have a real problem with people who, who pull stuff like that and, and, yeah, still alive. Yeah, I have a real problem with that. Um, you don't want to know my thoughts because <laughs> I don't know. I think we need to go back to the eye for an eye. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, here's what I'm going to say. Um, journalism. So on the same day at the Highland Park thing happened, two Philadelphia cops got shot, right? All right. So it was like cray cray on all news channels, national, international. The cops were grazed. 
my son's a police officer, nothing more than hearing two cops are shot, right? But, but it was so sensationalized. They kept saying that, it, that they, it, it might have been an accident or they don't know what happened. And they kept just doing the same thing over and over. They had no facts. They, had, they don't know what happened. And they just, the way they handled it was so disgusting. And you could just tell they just were looking for ratings. They wanted you to watch. It was like one news channel was trying to make it more than it was. I don't know what happened still. We're still waiting. However, yeah, two police officers got grazed with with gunshot wounds. They don't know where they came from. I don't know. Nobody really knows what happened. And they should have just minded their own business until they had some facts straight. And again, staying in my lane fill your mind with good stuff, share your message. And like deny always does, people always feel comfortable. People feel like they can share what they need to share. And it's, it's upbeat, it's encouraging, it's inspirational, educational. And those are the kinds of things that I want to um, fill my mind with. And just think about it. When you listen to certain songs, you feel a certain type of way because the music moves you. So if you're listening to music that makes you cry all the time all day every day that's that's what's going to that's what's going to be you and i choose to be happy and upbeat and not angry and not mean-spirited and so mindset is everything and i think journalism and the psychology of journalism would be a great room topic thank you back to you great room you guys loving it thank you for having me prof t here my phone's about to die if i cut out my apologies stay as long as i can (laughs) good look queen um and i we i know we went over the uh uh public 30 minutes that we were going to go over but i'm going to say this as we get ready to close the clubhouse doors for this week or at least today I, I just want to say, I just want to say this. It, it does get real. You have real situations, it's not just entertainers trying to get a scoop or sports athletes trying to, you know, this, that, and the other. It gets real. It gets real when you start leaking into real life situations that we need to, we need to view differently now because of how the world is looking at different things um, and be aware and show others, teach others. We all have different resources from different people we walk different ways of life and how we've traveled our journeys are all different but one thing that i love is when we put this in the clubhouse room and we take this out and bring it out to the world we can be able to do more if we be more um and support each other and be transparent in a world that's full of i don't really know what you are not just how you look, but I don't know how you feel because you don't want to say or you don't want to be transparent. You want to be what everybody else wants you to be except yourself. And I'll get into that later as we will discuss certain things, mental health and body shaping and all that other stuff at another episode. But to say that about journalism, it's it's the same thing. We run in packs. The good ones do. I want to stay there. But also, I want to help the other people who are probably lost because they're looking for something that's not there. I just need everybody that's in this room to leak this outside the room because it's all good energy in here. And I just want that to radiate. So as I get ready to close the door on this, if anybody got something to say either about this show, uh, what we're doing next show, um, where to be able to stay connected. I just want everybody that's in here doing business. And I know Denia has worked closely with all y'all. We we got this radio station that is a blessing, housing millions of listeners and things like that. I want everybody to share their resources with our resources so we can all win together um, because we do it better together. When we're on the same mission, I believe in that. I will always believe in that. Nothing will change my mind when it comes to that. And I just want all of us to share not just wealth of information, but wealth on making sure that we have the next generation in play to be able to hold on to our legacy of what we're trying to build today. That is important. Um, Any questions, information as I get ready to pass the baton to Denia, uh, hit me up on social media at All Things Next Legacy, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter. 
All positive vibes is what I do. Any contact information, make sure you lace me up with an email at charlesmadison at nextlegacy.com, N-E-X-X-L-E-G-A-C-Y. Um, and just be true. Like, at the end of the day, I promise, I promise y'all, this is how, not just how I feel, but this is what I want to leave for people. My opinion, <laughs> my honest opinion, my support in any way, shape, or form, it's important for us to get this mission out of just creating a balance. That's it. And I just want everybody to feel that. So, tonight, go ahead and do your thing, dude. Absolutely. Brian, are you able to speak real quick? If not, I'll close out. I think he stepped away. But um, I'm happy that everyone that's in this room, you guys are going to hear, you're actually going to be hearing Brian's commercials on the station very, very soon. So, we're working on that right now. Super excited. The Pocket USA is doing some incredible things and truly, truly saving lives. I want to say thank you to everyone that's in this room. So we not only have a station, but we have some serious discounts, y'all, when it comes to flights, when it comes to shopping. Like, we have connections with Walmart, Southwest, uh, Disney+. Plus. Paramount Plus, there's so many. Just hit, all you got to do is hit the link and then hit the partners link. So many things. Like, Charles, I introduced Charles to Zenny Optical where you can get glasses for discounts. If you wear glasses, honey, you need to get Zenny because who wants to pay 200 bucks and you can pay 20 Like, really. Like, I actually got a full pair of glasses for under 100 bucks. Like, I'm going to need y'all to get on board with that for sure. Um, but yeah, there's so many different partner links that we have in that link at the top and and you can also listen to amazing music while you shop 24 7 365 so today we have hungry and humble to um 21 clutch and so we have music from uh, we have motivational pieces and we have music from athletes all day long so make sure that you guys are tapped in with that make sure you guys are following next legacy on all social media any x x l e g a c y and make sure you guys are following me on all social media at denia joy d-a-n-a-y-a-a-z-u-r-e and go ahead and go to the website www.deniajour.com if you have youtube subscribe to me on youtube i have some amazing videos on there talking about stuff just like this i actually had a slight little rant about everything that's going on with this country and all of my thoughts. And I'm going to start doing more of those. Or I might do them on here. You never know. You But you have to follow me to find out. And so thank you for everyone. Erica, Pop T, Queen Karen, Brian, y'all are amazing. Make sure y'all are all following each other if you're not. Because everyone on this stage provides value each and every day. And every single stage I'm ever blessed to share with them and make sure you guys are following i am branded as well as next legacy because and go ahead yeah follow i am branded because you got music you can use this music in the reels like i am branded is definitely doing the daggone thing he's super duper humble but he has some really dope tracks that are out there so follow his music as well and don't forget to download us on spotify because we are all of our interviews the very next day are available on spotify so go ahead and show some love over there as well. So I think that's it. If anyone else has nothing to say, then we can close on out. Well, y'all, just stay, uh, just stay, let's stay connected. Let's stay connected. Let's make sure that we all are sharing good, positive vibes, make each one teach one. Listen, I still believe in that mentality. It takes a village. Yes, yes, yes. But I just want our village laced up with good information, good content, stuff that we can be able to pass on, stuff that we can help leave legacies for, and just be better. Do more, be more. That's all I that's that's all I believe in. Every day I get up, same, same motivation. And I just want y'all to be able to share that and apply that as well in your day-to-day lives. And I appreciate everybody again, like Denia said, Prophet T, Erica, Queen, Karen, Brian. And the people who will be listening as well. Just 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 stay up top and we're gonna be all right if we keep putting out good conscious messages out there to the people and we will we will continue to do this regardless. So let's all do that. Denia, go oh, ahead. 
Tell them what, what we're doing next week. They're gonna have to. They're gonna have to follow us to find out what next week's gonna look like. <laughs> I love it. I yeah. love it. Yeah. But if you've already, <laughs> but if you've already are on Clubhouse, already put that out there. So I mean, you yeah. gotta that band because <laughs> that one is another one laced with passion, laced with good conversation, good content, and it's just you know we we gotta have this. We need this, and it's and it's important. It's important for us. So. Um, just make sure y'all follow, uh, y'all follow everybody that's here. If y'all, if all of y'all are not following each other, please do share resources, have a conversation, bring this, bring this conversation from clubhouse to your house. Here be it. All right, you guys. Thank you so very much. You are amazing. Have a phenomenal day. Take care. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to the number one radio station for the people.